the host file directing the redirection. Now, each and every operating system has something called as the host file. The host file basically stores information or on where to find or locate a particular computer on the internet or on the network. It basically maps host names, which are also referred to as domain names, to IP addresses. In other words, you can actually think of the host file as a local system version of the domain name system or the DNS. I'm very sure all of you are aware of the fact that each time you start your browser and each time you type in a URL or a domain name like yahoo.com, what happens is your browser will automatically contact the DNS server of your ISP or internet service provider. And that DNS server will actually tell your browser what the IP address of the domain name that you entered is. Say, say for example, if you try typing yahoo.com, press enter, your browser immediately contacts the DNS server of your ISP. The DNS server tells your browser that the IP address of yahoo.com is so and so. So once that information reaches your browser, your browser now knows how to contact yahoo.com and immediately will send a request to the yahoo.com website. And of course, all this happens within a matter of a few seconds. Now, what if you did not want your browser to contact the DNS server of your ISP each time you type in a particular website address or each time you type in a domain name or URL? Now, this is where the host file get, comes into the picture because the host file is something like a DNS server wherein the host file will contain a list of domain names and their respective IP addresses. So now what happens is, so say for example, in your host file, you have made an entry of yahoo.com and entered the IP address of yahoo.com next to it. And once you save the host file, Next time you start your browser and if you try typing yahoo.com, automatically before your browser contacts your DNS server of your ISP, it will first go through the host file and look for the IP address of yahoo.com. And since your browser will obviously find that entry because you just added that entry to the host file, your browser will no longer contact the DNS server of your ISP and will automatically connect to yahoo.com on the IP address that was mentioned in the host file. Now that you understand what the host file is all about and how the host file works, let me actually quickly move on to the next slide which shows you important information related to the location of the host file. Now depending upon your operating system, the host file can be found at different locations. So if you're using a Microsoft Windows 95 or 98 or ME version, then the location of the host file is this drive, which could be C drive, D drive or E drive or wherever you've actually installed Microsoft operating system slash Windows. In other words, go to my computer, go to C drive for most of you. And if you have installed it in some other drive, go to that particular drive and then go to the Windows folder and you will see the host file inside that Windows folder. Similarly, for those of you using Microsoft Windows version NT, 2000, XP, 2003 or Vista, then the location of the host file is slightly different. You need to go to the Windows folder, then the System32 folder, then Drivers, then ETC and within the ETC folder, you will actually see the host file. And similarly for most Unix users, the host file can be made available or can be accessed in the slash etc directory. So what all can you actually do using the host file? The host file can be tweaked to carry out a number of interesting hacks. First of all, you can use the host file to block access to certain websites. So say for example, you are a parent 
or maybe you are a system administrator in a company or you are a professor in a particular college or maybe you are the police and what if you wanted to prevent your users from accessing a particular website now all you need to do is you need to of course edit or play around with the host file and we will in the next section be seeing a small demonstration on how you can do that and once you sort of make that configuration or change you can easily prevent people from accessing or blocking access to certain websites secondly you can also block annoying advertisements like pop-ups or banner advertisements which occupy or use up a lot of valuable bandwidth thirdly you can actually play a very nasty prank on somebody by simply redirecting the user to an embarrassing website each time the user enters the URL of a regular website. So say for example, if you try typing hotmail.com, normally hotmail.com should appear on the screen. However, what if you wanted to configure the system in such a manner that each time hotmail.com gets typed on a particular browser, then automatically some other website, which could be an embarrassing website, gets displayed on the screen. That's a very good prank that you can play on your friends or even on your professors or your boss. And finally, of course, the host file is often modified or sort of played around with by viruses and worms which want to make life most miserable for the victim whose computer has been infected. So let us now in the next section actually get to some real action and see some live demonstrations on how you can sort of play around with the host file and do all these listed fun and interesting and sometimes quite dangerous and important stuff on any computer which is running a Microsoft Windows operating system.